Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to more Surviving Mars. It's April 28th, which means all aboard the Martian Express. We've got some new DLC dropping as of today. If you guys saw my sneak peek video a couple days ago, you are not surprised. And today we're gonna finally get to play with it in a big way. This video is sponsored by Paradox Interactive who wanted me to show off the content for you guys, which I am happy to do. So a big thank you to them for that. And of course, if you guys like to learn more about the DLC, you can find links in the description down below. So we're going to start up a new game, and the challenge for me here is I'm, I'm basically going to start from scratch and try to build up a really large functional uh, colony, if I can, all in one video. But uh, really what I want to do, more than anything else today, is play around with those trains. I want to have a massive network and see organically how those trains are going to affect my colony layout, the way that I develop, the pace that I develop. You get the idea. I should note, by the way, there is a new commander profile if you want to use it, the Transport Tycoon, so track construction is halved. I mean, it only costs a bit of concrete to begin with, but if you really want to have a lot of this stuff going, it could be pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and start with the Transport Tycoon. And I think I'll try the Brussels Sprouts logo today. Though I'll be honest, I don't know when uh, Paradox wants to add an Eclipse logo in there, but uh, I would not be opposed, I'm just saying. Okay, we got a couple of really good starting locations on this particular map. I think I'll set up over here where I will have access to concrete metals and rare metals. So we won't need trains just to get us started, but there are plenty of other resources not too far away, such as another rare metals deposit that I would be able to make use of trains to exploit in the future. For now though, this seems pretty solid. And as always, the most important thing we can do at the beginning is start extracting some early concrete and start producing some of that fuel so we'll be able to send the rocket back home and get some uh, applicants from Earth and set them up here in Mars as fast as possible. So there's a very standard start right here. And let's see, what starting text do I have? Well, I could get the sensor towers early on. That could certainly be pretty nice for us. Uh, drone hubs, probably not gonna be set. I'll set that up eventually. I do have a prefab for that. Apartments, no. Terraforming, no. Yeah, none of this strikes me as extraordinarily good. But we do have the large stations to start with because I went for the train tycoon. So that's gonna be nice. Oh, wow. A scan actually just revealed a large water deposit right here. Uh, this is actually extraordinarily fortuitous. Absolutely outstanding location for a starting uh, set of domes. This is definitely a great spot to start. All right, so this will be my primary residential hub, and pretty much everything is going to end up spiking away from this. Oh, this is going to make my life easy. Okay, so we just found our first breakthrough technology already, and it's construction nanites. The buildings will construct themselves slowly without drones, and they'll find resources from nearby deposits. What that basically means is I actually should be able to set up trains all over the dang map and not even worry necessarily if the drones are in range. I mean, yeah, it's gonna be very slow, but you get the idea, it's pretty darn effective. Oh man, I've already found my mystery event as well, the Philosopher's Stone. Believe it or not, I haven't played around with a lot of the easy ones yet, so this will be an experience. Okay, so with our absolute bare basics set up, I think the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is just order some more stuff from Earth. I'm specifically thinking it would be good to get ourselves another fuel refinery and another moisture vaporator. Because fuel is what's gonna slow me down more than anything at this stage of the game. My primary goal is to refuel this rocket as fast as possible and send it back to get some passengers. All right, awesome. The rocket is ready to launch. We have a drone hub set up and ready to go. Let's return to Earth. And in the meantime, start putting together a dome. Okay, we have our first round of colonists ready to go, mostly going for some botanists, geologists, and scientists at the beginning, though we will want some engineers fairly early on. Plenty of applicants to work with. All right, and a dome is set up, currently setting up the services down over here, so uh, yeah, pretty soon we'll be ready to go ahead and accommodate. We'll get the first colonists on Mars, and right now it's only set uh, Sol 6. Oh, here's one of those new technologies, by the way, that I didn't show off in the sneak peek. Tracks are easier to repair and trains are safer for the passengers. Wait, safer in what way? Better able to handle low temperatures and stuff. Okay, so repair faster and I guess less affected by cold waves? That's interesting. Colonists have arrived, we officially enter into the Founder Stage. Awesome, and I did manage to research the farm in time, so let's go ahead and get working on this as well, ASAP. What's this technology? Luxurious trains, no comfort penalty while traveling. Ah, see, now I didn't know that they take a comfort penalty. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Planetary anomalies are now a thing. Excellent, what else can we find? Some research progress, resources, technologies. 
No breakthroughs, unfortunately, and I'm not really eager to send a whole bunch of my guys into space, but drones? I don't mind doing that, that's fine. And our first natural disaster is on the way. The dust storm. Ah, if only I had trains, this wouldn't slow me down at all, but I also have nowhere to go yet, so... You win this round, dust storm, but just you wait, you'll be sorry. Oh boy, we discovered Soylent Green again. Woohoo! Dead colonists converted to food! Uh, I don't think we need to set up uh, the Green Pastures retirement home, do we? I really hope not. Oh, finally, our first Martian born. I was kind of wondering if you're going to have to go through that entire founder stage, but it looks like the answer is no. Excellent. Now I can bring even more people from Earth. Oh yeah, and let's not forget to take advantage of the new skins. There we go. Much better looking grosser. Although, are those mostly vending machines? Eh, that's fine. One of the best things about playing with the United States as your sponsor is you do eventually get a Mega Trigon Dome, and it's really not that hard to achieve if you get some early scientists, so... This is a pretty big residential expansion for me, and it didn't cost me a dang thing! Finally got myself a Hawking Institute, and of course we're changing up that skin to look like the little ball up top here as well. I gotta say, I'm enjoying having some of these different skins. It's kinda nice, makes everything feel a little bit fresher, you know what I mean? Oop, same thing over here, boink, 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 there we go. New skins applied! Okay, at this point the colony has grown rather substantially. We're up to about 200 pops, and you can see a lot's been going on. We got three domes over here in total, lots of population centers going. Uh, we're struggling to hit self-sufficiency quite the way I would have wanted. The consumption of things like electronics and polymers are certainly slowing me down, but another issue I'm having is I really would like more rare metal production. That would allow me to get a lot more money that I could use to buy more rockets, buy more materials, and just kind of keep things flowing back and forth between Earth and Mars. Not to mention go for some of those planetary anomalies and stuff, right? So, I want to expand our rare metals production. Can't do it over here, in fact, we've already used up about half of this deposit, so the natural solution is to move over here. Now, we're kind of in range where building another dome would honestly be okay, but... You know what's gonna be a lot more fun is simply taking advantage of the fact that we do have trains now. So if you haven't seen this before, right, and you missed my uh, sneak peek video, then what you'd wanna do is simply set up a station. Let's say something kinda like this, and I think I will set it up over here because I'll probably have more trains coming out of this area later. But for now, we'll do something like this. We'll set up a little train station right over uh, what's close to a door. There's a door right there, so that works perfectly. Right over here should be fine. And then we'll set up another station right over here. Now, again, normally this rare metals deposit would be out of range of where I need it to be, right? So this would not be a place I can really exploit unless I place another dome. But simply by placing down both of these train stations, we are going to be able to connect them using some tracks. We now have tracks, everything's been built up over here, and we have constructed a train. So we'll simply assign it to this track. There's our little train right there, and it should automatically find some people and bring them over here to start working on their shifts. And sure enough, it's working exactly as intended. Again, might have been just as fine to build a dome in this particular case, but if you didn't see what I was doing with trains in the sneak peek video, this is how it works. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of resources that previously were very inconvenient to access are suddenly very convenient to access. What about these metal deposits over here? Yeah, no problem whatsoever. We can totally do stuff like that. What if we wanted to go ahead and just build a residential center over here and have people travel over to a vista and they can easily commute into work? That is also now an option, right? Trains are great. Trains trained up a lot of cool stuff. We like trains. You know, I don't usually build a casino complex, but uh, in this case, I think I might actually do that. One, because, you know, the pyramid skin is kind of cool, but also, this does service gaming as well as luxury and gambling, and uh, apparently, per a lot of the bad comfort I'm looking at here, shopping, gaming, and stuff, these are very common complaints people are having. This is one way of addressing that, while ideally not consuming all of my precious, precious electronics, of which I don't have very many. So, yeah, we're gonna try to avoid that as much as possible and hopefully let people get their gambling on and that solves the problem. Well, we seem to be reaching a point where I no longer have any rare metals really coming in at all since this deposit has exhausted itself. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is start working over here because I found two deep rare metal deposits, one of which is worth a whopping 25,000 rare metals. Now that is, uh, that is truly insane. So we've got a good train station set up over here. Now I would have fit a large station in here if I could. Actually, I'm wondering if I can. Nah, I don't think there's any way for me to even snake the, um, the tracks around if I wanted to. I may have built a little bit too tight if I'm completely honest, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and set up a station off in this direction right over here with the goal, obviously, of being to extract a freaking ton of deep rare metals for the rest of the game. 
Okay, I have assigned another train to this track, and sure enough, there go the geologists working exactly as intended. Okay. So we're already up to a full extra 16 workers, specialists no less, working on rare metals, which means um, for a long, long, long time, we're gonna be producing plenty of this stuff. I know it hasn't quite updated here yet, but uh, a lot of materials should be getting dropped off. Let's make sure that the right stuff is getting dropped off over here as needed. Shouldn't need polymers and electronics. So it should be automatically depositing rare metals here since it's kind of the only place that it can go. And then from there, should automatically be trying to distribute. Now, I haven't quite fully figured out how this whole transport policy works. You can see here that we have the option to try and balance uh, between trains. We can send all by train, don't send any by train, that kind of thing. So, in theory, it should be automatically trying to transport some of the rare metals away from this station where it's being mass produced and over here. Could be wrong on that, and if that's the case, maybe what you do is click on this and say send all by train? That might work. We can try that. Of course a dust devil would come over just to destroy all this, though. Oh, for crying out loud. Run, explorer, run! Oh, gosh. What are you- Ah, get out of here! All right, well, this dust devil apparently has decided to really mess me up. Thanks for that. Oh, this is why this was a problem. Oh, see, I've never done this mystery before, so I didn't realize these uh, weird Philosopher's Stone crystals apparently could emit electrostatic dust devils, which means building right next to it might have been a bit of a mistake, but I'm powering this thing up, so it stops doing that, and now it produces even more red metals for me. Oh, that's pretty cool. Or we could just get some research points by destroying it, but there we go. Well, that's a pretty cool and nifty effect. Me likey. Wait, these are deep metals. What happened to my rare metals? There it is. Oh, yeah, it totally is producing some. Huh, what do you know? That's kind of cool. Now, something I really want to do is set up a nice big dome right over here because there are three, count them, three research sites located right there, which means we can get so much extra research if I place it right here, 55% boost. Not to mention it's close to some rare metals and some concrete, so this is a great spot for a new base, but a little bit out of range. You know what the solution's gonna be? Trains. Oh boy, I just realized we've got a bit of a problem. I am completely out of metals. Uh oh. All right, well, I got two rockets on the way with a bit more to work with, which will tide me over for a little while, but I do see that there are some good underground metal deposits not terribly far away. Alternatively, we could go really far away over here. I don't see really any advantage to that. Um, we did kind of build directly onto some metal extractors over here, so this could become an option. But I can't even get all my power set up anymore because we're out of a very vital resource. Yeah, ouch, that's uh, that's a goof on my part. That's a pretty serious goof on my part, but I think we caught it just early enough that we'll be able to get around it. Yeah, like this is actually a really big problem now that I think about it. We have some power leaks because of a gosh dang dust storm again, and as a result, fortunately all the power is kind of constricted to this area, but had we been draining power out of this entire area with no way to repair the cables or replace them, that could have been GG basically right there, draining my power completely, waiting for a freaking rocket to come from Earth before people die horrible deaths. Yeah, that wouldn't be very good, would it? No, no it would not. Ugh, now is really not the time for another dust storm, thank you very much, but okay, we'll work with it. So I'm about to finish building up this train, let's go ahead and assign you like so. And now we have people that are able to work here at the Metals Extractor. We'll say that that's a super high priority, I really wish we had more geologists working over here instead, but you know what, I'll take 20 summit production per soul for now. At the very least, that keeps me going. Plus, I've been setting up these triboelectric scrubbers in a lot of locations. Which, while it does take a fair bit of power, should greatly reduce the maintenance, if not eliminate it, for a lot of stuff, including some of these solar panels, and also, uh, all these tur turbines, so I'm not gonna have to spend any more machine parts on that, which saves me a lot of metals as well. So this is all looking certainly a lot better. We've certainly got plenty of good efficiency going on over there. Let's boost you up a fair bit. Boom, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think we're gonna be stabilizing from here. Now, maybe one more cargo shuttle worth of metals would be necessary, because then we can set up another set of trains right over here. Now, one thing I admit that I'm getting a little confused on is it does look like some of these uh, stations aren't quite sending resources the way I need, and I'm not too sure what's de uh, deciding that. It's building up a huge stockpile over here. Is it purely because there's no major like place that needs it here, therefore it's just choosing not to deliver it? 
uh, or what? Now, you can get around that to some extent by using shuttles, but over here in the rare metals, for example, it's, it's actually working exactly as intended. No need for shuttles, it is delivering it. And the only thing I did differently here is assign two trains, not one. So one can be focused exclusively on getting passengers back and forth, and the other, I'm, I'm guessing, is kind of functioning like a cargo train. So over here, at least, what I'm hoping to do is build up some more of these trains, and then uh, start using a second train just to deliver materials, and see if that solves the issue. It might. Now, actually, oh, okay, no, wait a minute. Now I know what the problem is here. Okay, so part of the issue is you have to determine what like quantity of a resource you desire at this train station. So simply by setting this up to 100, it quickly did deliver, using those trains, all the metals that I had here until we hit that limit. So case in point, if I go right here and raise it up to 180, I'll bet you the train picks a bunch up. Yep, there it goes. All right, the metals are on their way over here. So watch for that. If you're using the trains, make sure you haven't set this down to some tiny amount because otherwise it's really not going to try to deliver it where you know you're going to need it. That's very important. So the second train I'm assigning here is absolutely pointless. But you know what? It feels good nonetheless. We'll accept it. Let's go ahead and bump you up to 180 and let's take a look at what's going on over here. So we've got 144 metals assigned right here. Train should be arriving momentarily. We can click on said train. It picks up, yep, 41 metals, and off it goes. All right. So yeah, one train probably is enough, but watch for that, because that's an easy thing to overlook. I'm working on my next big construction project, a Megadome, way over here with some more research plus other resources I'm gonna want, but also it's just like really far away. But we're hooking everything up using the trains. Now you can see the shuttles are certainly making this a heck of a lot easier to do. But, if all is going according to plan, we should see that we have a second train now able to travel along this way. Let's see what happens here. So he drops off, and okay, so interesting. It looks like the trains do only want to interact between the uh, set that they're already assigned to. So what we may need to do is assign another train to this segment of track. So rather than treat this as one long train route that goes back and forth, it looks like you have to treat each one of these four individually. Okay, that makes sense. We can work with that. Get out of here, Dust Devil. You leave. You leave my train tracks alone. Oh boy, I think I made a mistake here. Okay, so I got some of this mega storage up and running on the Mega Dome, right? And unfortunately, I didn't get it up to 75 before a dust storm hit, which means I have no oxygen flow whatsoever. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to simply turn off the dome, and everyone should automatically get on the trains and then hightail it the heck out of here, because I've got two days before I can produce any oxygen over here, and otherwise, these guys are all going to die. Why are they running all this? Wait, what? What? What are you? What? What? Guys! Okay. Turn this back on for a sec. Turn around. No. Okay. Well, um, okay. Some of them have decided to take the long march uh, all the way over uh, here, and they are uh, going to die, but... <laughs> The rest managed to get onto the trains, and this is one of those situations where had the trains not existed, uh, we wouldn't be able to use the shuttles, and 30-something people were probably about to die. So, this helps. This does help at least a little bit. Hmm, now one unfortunate thing is our metals have expired in both of these deposits. The good news is, I don't see any reason why we couldn't just extend the trains to move directly onto the next deposit if we wanted to. There's plenty more to be had up over here, for example. Sure, let's just expand the trains. See, this solves so many problems using these. This is great. Now, if you do want to get rid of some of these train tracks, you have to first demolish the track itself, which you can do, and then once that's gone, then you can get rid of the station, not the other way around, unfortunately, because it means we're going to have to spend a lot more concrete in order to uh, rebuild the track where we want it to go, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Oh, here's something I just noticed that's very interesting. Wait a minute, I can go to the depot management and I can specifically say I want to store some water and oxygen? Really? So this is a way that theoretically I could be transporting uh, liquids around. Now that makes some sense, because if you look at the train here, you can actually tell it instead of transporting resources, hook yourself up to transport fluids instead. Which is really, really interesting. So instead of evacuating this, what I might have been able to do if I had thought about it, was set up the trains to deliver some oxygen over here, and that might have kept me afloat throughout that dust storm. What a very, very interesting idea. And another dust storm is here to make things unpleasant, but the good news is with my incredible train network, we have nothing to worry about. 
All right. Well, you know, I've been recording for almost six hours at this point. So we're starting to work on our first round of wonders over here. We are growing some crops in the open fa farm, which means most of my self-sustaining needs are more or less gone, especially now that I just finished with Project Mohole. So it shouldn't be too much challenge left unless... I royally mess it up. But at the end of the day, I have to say, trains definitely do seem to make a pretty big difference. The ability to access a lot of these resources and not transfer resources around between domes has made it so much easier for me to micromanage. And you can see I really stacked up my population pretty high in a few of these domes over here. So I'm liking the trains a lot. I really am. And the skins are pretty cool. Oh, we finished the Arcology. Let's go ahead and swap you. And boom, there we go. Got a new Arcology for our Megadome. That looks pretty darn sweet. So yeah, I think these are some pretty fun DLCs, and trains are absolutely going to be a major part of my playthroughs going forward, no doubt about it. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring it. Of course, you guys can find links in the description down below now that these DLCs have been released. My name is Provis. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.